Hey guys, we're still moving forward with these youth devotionals from afar, even though we're sort of able to meet a little bit in person. It just gives us another avenue to do some teaching. So we're going to delve right in. I hope school has started out well for you. I know you've been in session for a little bit now. I have some friends in the school system and I know things are quite different, but you can do it. This week we're going to talk about secrets. Ooh. I'm not going to make you fill out a white card with what your deepest, darkest secret is but I am going to challenge you a little bit. Maybe if you just think about that for a minute. If I were to have you fill out a little card or a piece of paper and no one would ever know that it was you, ever, 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 what would you write on there? Your deepest secret, your ugliest thought, your biggest struggle, what would it be? No one's going to know. Here's the thing. Everyone has something, right? Everyone has something. Now my question is this. Why don't we share those things? Why do we try to keep those a secret? Why is it one of our biggest goals to keep those secrets quiet so that no one else knows? My thinking, my guess is it's fear, right? We know that somebody and other people would be totally thrown off, shocked, disturbed, maybe surprised, and on and on and on if we shared those things. That awkward moment that you tell someone something, you think it's the right time, you think you can confide in them, and they get that look on their face like, what did you say? That's why we don't. We're afraid what other people will think. We're afraid what's going to happen on the other side of us telling the truth. Let's talk about King David for a minute. This is all related and then next time we're going to come back and talk about us a little bit more. So one spring David's army was away at war and sometimes he was with them, sometimes he wasn't, this time he wasn't, and he was outside and he was drawn to another woman who was on the top of another house he could see and her name was Bathsheba. Here's the thing about David being a king. He was entitled to any woman that he wanted, married or unmarried, it didn't matter. If he said, bring her to me, then okay, bring her to me. And that's what he did. In his moment of weakness, in his moment of foolishness, he called for her. Here's the thing, her husband, his name was Uriah. He was away in the war. So David called for her to come to him. She did, and they slept together. Now here's the thing, it gets a little bit worse. David finds out that Bathsheba is pregnant, which means because of the time frame that Uriah is away at war, when he comes home, he will have a baby in his home that he was not the father of. Not great, right? So instead of David fessing up to his mistake and trying to make it right somehow by telling the truth, no, he tries to create cover-ups. He tries to fix the situation multiple times. You can read the story in the Bible. We're going to skip over those details, but you should read it. It gets kind of complicated. So the point that I do want to focus on is he comes up with this plan. He decides that he's going to send his military officials and send for Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, to be sent to the front lines of battle. Now, the front lines of battle means you're much more likely to get killed, right? In 1 Samuel chapter 11, verses 26 and 27, it says that Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, heard what happened to him and she mourned for him. And then it says that when the time of mourning was over, David brought, him to her, brought her, Bathsheba, to himself, made her his wife, and she had his baby. The next statement says this, the thing that David did displeased the Lord. It feels like almost like an out, like a, an after statement to me, right? Even though the thing David did was an offense to God, it seemed like the people that were still alive, still involved in that situation, just moved on. Now we can't be sure, but I wonder if those people ever mentioned anything about that situation again. Wonder if anybody said anything about that. Or maybe it was just like that heavy thing that no one ever talks about and it becomes a giant elephant in the room. Now, I'm sure that some of you, some of us, maybe all of us can relate to that. Maybe there was a time in your life, a situation in your life, something specific that you had in your heart, in your head, whatever, you knew that it didn't make the Lord happy. You knew it was a sin, but you tried to cover it up. I knew it was a sin. I knew it didn't please the Lord, but I tried to cover it up. And we want to avoid those things. We don't want to mention them, right? We don't want to face those things it becomes the elephant in the room that grows and grows and grows. And that's what happened to David. So come back next time and we'll talk about what happened and we'll talk about what the next move needs to be for us. Mm -hmm.